Today we speak with tech expert Phil Copeland from aboard his Seawind 1260 in the Whitsundays as he shows us how to set up high speed internet using Elon Musk's new Starlink satellite system from aboard a boat. Hey Phil, thanks for joining us from uh, sunny with Sundays. Hey Brent, how are you? Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, going to tell us all about uh, Starlink, the new technology that's uh, bringing fast internet to boats. Um, yeah, so I've been following Starlink for several years now and uh, really excited about its potential for use on boats. And just this year, Starlink actually started selling systems last year in 2021 and they were mainly targeting remote households and people in remote locations but with a fixed dish that was designed to be installed on top of a rooftop and uh, that was non-moving so you are uh, when they first started selling it it was restricted for use in a single location but in fact earlier this year in fact with the advent of the ukraine war Starlink flicked a switch which enabled it to be used from mobile locations. So that's opened the floodgates because now lots of people in RVs and on boats are obviously starting to, to use it. But the coverage is still in Australia really limited. Um, if you draw a line from sort of Perth across to Rockhampton at the moment, and south of there is where it's active today and they're gradually opening up other parts of the coast now i bought my starlink dish i bought one just to experiment with it and try it out and good news is that the Whit sundays and this section of the coast they're saying will be enabled in q3 of this year so in a month or two's time so hopefully um this this area should have coverage uh, very shortly. I don't know if you can see, but this yeah. is the dish at the moment. Um, it's a fully enclosed uh, dish and it's got a what's called a phased array antenna in it. It's also got a few motors, so you can mount it like on a, it comes with a little basic stand. And when you power it up, it actually rotates horizontal and it starts searching the sky for a signal. Right. And here in the southern hemisphere, when it when it finds a signal, and there's probably ten or fifteen satellites in view at any one time, it'll orient itself to kind of point slightly south, uh, and it stays locked in that position. And the motors in this dish will rotate it as needed, so you'll see it move very slowly. For example, if you're anchored and the boat's swinging it'll rotate oh, really? around wow. as as yeah. you move and in fact part of the license that starlink's got is you're not actually supposed to use this from a mo a platform that is moving at the moment you're only supposed to use it from a stationary location plenty of people there's people that are using it on both boats and cars traveling at at speed and in fact starlink's about to license some airlines to use it it'll be mounted in airlines on cruise liners so it works fine from a moving platform that can move quite quickly and cope with seas because the thing that actually tracks the satellites is not the motors in here but this phased array antenna that's built inside and that can adjust its beam electronically to lock into the satellite and that also raises another point that it does require about anywhere from five to 10 amps of power when it's running. So you need to have a bit of power available. And for example, I would not leave it on overnight. Typically we'll get to an anchorage, I'll turn it on. And while we're awake and wanting to use the internet, I'll leave it on, but then I'll turn it off overnight because it would just chew too much juice. I do expect, this was really designed for residential use. Mm. It's pretty hardened. I mean, it's designed to use in cold climates. It's got a snow melt function built into it, <laughs> um, which thankfully we don't have to use here in Australia. Um, but I do expect they're going to come out with a marinized version. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be a little later this year that will be both a bit smaller, probably a little less power hungry uh, as well. 
As just from the power so. front, is it uh, what power source is it? Is it 240? Uh, um, yeah, it's 240. You can, people are making 12 volt adapters, but it comes with a modem. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. And I just plug that in, and the, that modem has got the cable, this long cable plugs into that modem and provides power to the unit itself right through the modem. Every now and then I pull it out and try it to see if it's uh, working or not. And in fact, when we were out at the Percy Islands last week, I turned it on and lo and behold, it worked. And I had 250 megabits of uh, download speed in the Percy's, which was fantastic. 250 um, megabits per second. That's that's extraordinary. Like, that's faster than what I get on NBN at home. <laughs> it is. And, I mean, this is a complete game changer. The speed, you're getting anywhere from sort of 100 megabits up to 300, even 400 megabits of download speed. So it's super fast. Upload speeds are typically 30 to 50 megabit uploads as well. So it's much faster than most of the services you get in Australia. And it's a complete game changer for rural and remote Australia. Um, absolutely fantastic. And the other piece of really good news is it's um, it's about 130 or $140 a month for unlimited usage. So use, use as much as you like. The dish itself, you've got to purchase that and it costs about just under $1,000. Um, I ordered mine just before we left for this trip, I ordered it in the first week of May and I had it, it was shipped from California to me and I got it within seven days. So, And this is in Australia, so, right? In Australia, it's shipped from, from the SpaceX office in LA and I had it within seven days. I took it outside, turned, plugged in the router, turned it on and within 10 minutes it was working. There's no configuration or anything needed. You're talking 140 Aussie a month? The yep, 140 Aussie a yeah. month. And about a thousand dollars Aussie for the dish. Yeah, actually, there's they've just introduced a new price plan. So the 140 was for a fixed address, but when I ordered mine at the beginning of May, there was a portability option. So even though you had to nominate a specific address where it was being installed, you could take it with you on the road. And I think that cost an extra 10 bucks a month or something like that. However, since then, in fact, at the beginning of June, they announced a new service called Starlink for RVs. And that is designed to be a completely portable plan. And um, I will probably change mine over to that. And that will, uh, that costs a little bit more. I'm not sure quite how much it is, but it's, it's not. Considering the quality of the service you're getting, it's not that expensive. If you want to find out what's going on with it as well, you just go to lestarlink.com and there's a map that shows you where it's currently active at the moment. There are, um, so Starlink, you know, it's a company that's um, been created by Elon Musk under the SpaceX base rocket company. And this is really how they're going to fund their <laughs> travel to Mars by providing global internet coverage to remote regions of all countries and it's a huge marketplace it's not designed to work in cities it will work in cities but the density of population in cities is you know it's not given to that it's really when you're in the country so or in uh, remote regions and um yeah it's massive they've launched about a little over 2,000 low orbit satellites and uh, compared and these are like to little micro satellites, aren't they? They're about, about the size of a fridge, the current generation satellites. Yeah. And there's a fantastic animation maps where you can see them circulating, circling the world uh, as well at the moment, which is pretty mind boggling just to see how many of them are up there. And they're up at a, an altitude of about between 500 and 600 kilometers, which means that the signal can travel up there and back with fairly low latency, You're typically looking at 30 to 40 millisecond latency. And this is kind of generation one of these satellites. And they're hoping to start launching their second generation of satellites a little later this year. And the plan is to have 30 to 40,000 of these satellites in circulation eventually. And the next generation of satellites, um, they've just started talking a bit about them and they're going to actually have a ton more bandwidth available as well. So you're potentially looking at even much higher speeds, not that 
you know, 250 megabits is more than good enough. For, you know, it's 10 times as good as probably what you've got at home at the moment, but it is a huge game changer. But the really interesting thing is that with the second generation of satellites, the, this first set of satellites have to have a ground station to relay the signal from your satellite dish back to Earth and then connect it into the, the internet backbone. And so those ground stations, um, Starlink has been building out in all, like a lot of countries, and, you know, there's about 15 or 20 of them so far built in Australia, but mainly in the southern part of Australia, and they're, they're putting them just starting to open them up in the northern part of Australia. Generation 2 satellites um, will not require the ground stations. And at the moment, the ground stations restrict how far you can be. You've got to be within a, like a 500 kilometre radius of those ground stations. So, for example, it wouldn't work in the middle of the Pacific at the moment unless there was a ground station nearby. The version 2 satellites are actually going to use lasers to relay the signal from one satellite to another right around the world so that you can um, be in very remote locations like at the North or South Pole or in the middle of Pacific and still get your signal through. But that that's still yet to come. Right. And when when do we expect to see, you know, that sort of coverage, do you think, uh, taking hold? Is it going to be a year, two years? I think. I think you'll see the first of that becoming available probably in the second half of 2023, I'm guessing. A lot depends on when they start launching this next generation of satellites. And the catch to that is when SpaceX are going to launch this new giant rocket they're building, the Starship, mm. um, and they've just got approval to do the first test launches of that. Um, which everybody's crossing their fingers will happen in July of this year. And in fact, they're going to launch, when they start doing test launches, they're going to carry payloads of the Gen 2 Starlink satellites. And uh, worth going and following some of that because it's just absolutely fascinating seeing how they're going to do it. So by the second half of next year means that as yachtsmen, uh, travellers doing blue water cruising, um, that's what we'll need to get it away from this, this is really a service that's just going to work in coastal regions at the moment and yeah. in countries where it has been licensed, basically. Right. So the, the map will show you where it's available at the moment and which countries they're, they're moving very rapidly to add a lot of additional um, countries right now. So I think the Philippines has just been added in Asia, but that's the only Asian country uh, right now. And um, but but that's unfolding very quickly. And there are a couple of excellent groups on Facebook, Starlink for RVs, Starlink for boats, Starlinks in Australia. I think they're three separate groups that have got tons of people that are already doing hacks. People are finding that you can actually disable the motors and mount it just pointing straight up and they're finding they're getting a perfectly adequate signal. So it doesn't need to move. And people are mount. Some people are, are sort of hacking into it and mounting it that way. But I, I expect that for boaters, there'll be a marinized version available before too long, and hopefully by the end of the year, that will be probably uh, easier to deal with than this because this is moderately large, and you know it does want to have an unobstructed view of the sky. So. At the moment, I'm just putting it on the front of the boat on, you know, next to the anchor locker or somewhere there. Um, and typically, you know, making sure it's got good visibility south, basically. So like uh, and, masts and booms, are they potential interruption? No, I mean, typically, for whatever reason, because I'm in southeast trade winds, the front of the boat's typically facing south most of the sure. time anyway. So I don't have any obstructions from that perspective. Um, so it's not been an issue, but if you were doing a more permanent mounting, I, I think I'd, I would like what I've done is put a couple of fishing rod holders on either side of the boat, and I can stick it stick it into that on either side of the boat. It comes with a a pole holder, and you'll see on the Starlink for RV groups, you know, people are putting it on their ladders on the side of their RVs and. Mm. There's a ton of ton of stuff there for it as well. Yeah, I've seen some good stuff in the Starlink uh, on boats 
Facebook group. It seems to be a lot of, uh, as you said, hacks going on. In, yeah, uh, well, it's a, it's a really fast-moving space at the moment. And as I say, I do think there will be a new dish that's available, I'm hoping, by the end of the year that kind of improves this, as makes mm. it easier as well. Well, it's a pretty exciting time we live in when you uh, can get 250 megabits uh, out at Percy Island. <laughs> So uh, yeah, well, I'm just frustrated that here we are in the Wit Sundays, and of course it's not working at the moment here. I was going to point out that uh, you're currently not on Starlink. <laughs> I'm not, and <laughs> it's yeah. But you know, by the time we head back south, it should be. So it, it's not far away, and uh, the quality of the service once you get it is excellent. I mean, people are scrapping their sky reach or whatever it was called nbn service which you know is pretty pretty ordinary compared to this it's for australia this is just such a huge game changer if you live in rural totally. australia it's, it's really going to enable the, uh, the, the digital nomad to go that bit further well the fact that it's unlimited data as well at at pretty high speed really means you can do a lot and um so hopefully not everyone's going to be streaming netflix uh and soaking up all that bandwidth <laughs> Well, I think I think they've got so much bandwidth available that it's worth it. Well, it's great to see this trickle down immediately to boats, uh, you know, beyond uh, having to go through other industries first. So, um, yeah, well, listen, Phil, thanks so much for a really uh, comprehensive overview there of Starlink. And um, we'll put some of those links and notes in the, uh, in the notes of this video. And, uh, yeah, keep us posted. Well, uh, no we'll worries. Watch, well, uh, interest. Hopefully, I can do uh, an update in a uh, couple of months' time, and uh, with uh, with uh, Starlink working uh, further north, basically. So I think we'll have to tune in somewhere in a very remote location <laughs> where internet would be impossible. And uh, yeah, well, our, our goal time. is to get to Lizard Island, so it'd be nice to be able to get it up there. So yeah. but, uh, it may be a bit too far north at the moment. Anyway. Fantastic. All right. Thanks so much. And um, yeah, we'll stay tuned. Cheers, Brent. Thanks. Bye.